Today I'm going to talk about all the gear you need to be a landscape photographer and that means camera, lens, tripod, accessories, filters, backpacks and hiking gear. So let's get started. Hey everyone, my name is Toma, Photo Tom here on YouTube. If you're here for the first time, this channel is all about landscape photography, travel photography, outdoor nature photography and stuff like that. So you can subscribe to see more videos like this. Before we begin this video, I want to let you know that I have a photo album out. It's a fine art print album, a hardcover one with my foggy forest. The album is printed by Blurb and it's published on Amazon. So you have a direct link, you can go there and you can support me and this channel by buying that album. Now let's get back to the video from today. We have a lot to talk about and I want to keep it as short as possible. Now, let's start with the camera. What type of camera do you need? Well, in my personal opinion, you need a full frame camera. You can go with a DSLR or a mirrorless. My personal recommendation is to have a mirrorless. I have a Canon EOS R. I recommend EOS R or EOS uh, R5. Let's move very quickly to lens. Basically, in my personal opinion, you need three lens that can be divided into two groups. You have this all around lens. It's a 24 to 105 L lens from Canon. It's an F4. It has image stabilization. So you also have kind of like a wide angle lens, but you also have kind of like a telephoto lens. It's something in between. I use this for forest photography and urban photography. Whenever I'm inside towns, I'm using only one lens and this is it. On the other hand, you will need a, a really wide one. I'm using the 17 to 40 millimeter lens F4L from Canon. You can go also with the 16 to 35. I don't think it's worth buying the, the F2.8. You can go with F4. All my lenses are F4, mainly because in landscape photography, uh, I usually use apertures of F8, F11, F16. I really don't need F2.8 because F2.8 means twice the money and twice the weight. So the third lens that I think you uh, are going to need, it's a longer telephoto, it's a true telephoto lens. And this is it, uh, this is the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Uh, it has image stabilization. It's an F4 lens um, from the L series. So it's, it's of good quality. If you're buying a lens with this focal length, 200, don't buy it without image stabilization. There are, there are versions without image stabilization, but if, even if you're going to use, if you're going to say to yourself, well, I'm going to shoot from, from the tripod, so I don't need image stabilization. Yes, you're going to need it because you're not going to use the tripod all the time. So buy one with image stabilization. There is a side note to this. You may also need a macro lens. I don't have a macro lens. I only have uh, some macro rings. They have contact so I can control the, the aperture. They're not the best solution for macro photography, uh, but I'm not that much into macro photography. If I would uh, have to recommend a macro lens, I would say to be, let's say, 180 millimeters, and you can choose the brand and whatever. This is in terms of camera and lenses, everything that you need. Now, in terms of accessories, a very useful accessory is the trigger, is the remote, because even if you have the camera on the tripod, you need a remote to control it. I prefer a remote like this because I can set a custom um, self timer and I can take advanced selfies of myself. Um, you can also shoot time lapses with this. Uh, I'm not using it for that, but um, if uh, if I would have to recommend another type of remote, would be uh, an infrared one. They're really quick to use. Uh, I don't recommend Bluetooth uh, remote controls. It takes time to connect to the camera. You have to do that connection each time, and um, it will also drain the battery of your camera. Now let's talk about filters. The first filter that you're going to need as a landscape photographer, it's going to be the circle polarizer. You mount it on your lens, you rotate it, 
and it polarizes. It basically takes away the glare and the reflection from different objects. The effects of this filter can't be simulated in post-production, so it's an absolute must filter. My recommendation is to have one of these filters on each lens. So you see every, every lens uh, has its own circular polarizer. Even if you have the same uh, size of your lens, uh, it's, it's still go it's going to take time to mount the polarizer on your lens. And the polarizer stays on my lens basically all the time. So this is the first filter. I recommend uh, buying one that has a slim version, especially when you use polarizer on uh, wide angle lens. Otherwise, you may see the edges of the, um, of the filter. The second filter that you're going to need, or the second type of filters, are square ones. Let me just take one out. So they look something like this. In terms of holder, you'll need something like this. I recommend buying the one from Lee because it has this small quick release. Uh, there are brands out there that try to copy this one, this idea. I saw different uh, different holders, but the, the holder from the Lee is still the best. You will also need an adapter ring. It's this one, I hope to see it. It's this one over here that it's mounted uh, on top of the polarizer over here. And you just simply do like this and this stays there. In terms of ND graded filters, you will need a three-stop reversible filter. I'm pretty sure it's not visible, but it has the three-stop right here in the middle. And this is a really good one for sunrises and sunsets and whenever you have bright intensities right on the horizon line. When the brightness is up in the sky, you will need a classic three-stop ND graded filter uh, soft. This is it. I recommend having these made from glass. They are extremely sensitive, so my tip is to have have something like this which is a, uh, a really strong box to put the filters on because I broke uh, a couple of these and <laughs> they're pretty expensive. Uh, another filter that you're going to need and here I recommend having this one from uh, from Lee is this square one. It's a 10 stop ND filter. Now you may also need the six stop because sometimes um, it's too dark outside and when you're using the 10 stop, the exposure time is way too long. I had to buy another six stop. I broke mine. Again, it's glass. So when you're dealing with glass filters, the quality is the best, but they are really, really sensitive. If you're using the holder from Lee, you can have ND graded filters either from Lee or from other brands. I'll be I'll be honest with you. I have the filters from Lee. I have the plastic ones. I don't have the glass ones. Uh, the plastic ones, I didn't like them that much. It, they get really steamy in uh, in misty mornings, and that's the reason I didn't like them. Uh, right now, I'm using these ones from Ken Faith. Uh, they have uh, something like a professional line or something like this. Um, I received these filters from them. Uh, they say they don't get misty, but they do. Uh, but the quality of the filters um, is good. They, they work really, really well. Okay, let's move on. Tripods. This is the place where landscape photographers do their biggest mistake uh, because they initially invest in a cheaper tripod that's it, that is really small and they think that the tripod is going to do the job. They uh, buy either a small tripod from carbon fiber because it's cheaper or they buy an aluminum one, a bigger one, again because it's cheaper but it's bigger and they, uh, okay, it's, 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 it's enough for my camera gear. The problem is that 
you will invest in tripods that are not suited uh, for landscape photographers. Uh, if you want my advice, invest in a quality tripod. Uh, I have lots of tripods. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, I've spent money on tripods a lot, uh, a lot of money. A lot of money went into tripods and uh, I recommend having a tripod made from carbon fiber with a light head, a, uh, the head is got to be a ball head and the height of the tripod has to match your height. Otherwise you're gonna be hunched down and it's, it's gonna hurt your back. And I recommend buying a quality one from the start. In terms of backpacks, because you need to put your gear into, into something and uh, you need to carry it on your on the mountain. Uh, you will need a professional backpack that is designed uh, for hiking in the mountains, either as a normal hiker or as a, or as a, a photographer. I have one from F-Stop. It costs a lot of money. Uh, and in my personal opinion, even though it's a big back backpack and is designed to carry a lot of gear, it doesn't have the proper hip support to um, to handle that gear for longer periods of time. If I'm going uh, hiking for one day or one day plus one night and I'm coming back the next day, then yes, I, w I can take this backpack. But if I have to hike for several days and I need more clothing with me, I will uh, have my daughter with me. I think it's a much better backpack. The problem is the, the, the daughter backpack is heavier, it's twice the weight of the, of the F-stop backpack. That's the only uh, minus. Other than that, it, it stays better on my back and it also has a much better hip support. Let's move to the hiking gear because uh, a landscape photographer should wear proper hiking gear. Let's start with boots. You need two types of boots. You need, uh, you need boots uh, for three seasons, spring, summer, and autumn. And here I recommend either Scarpa or La Sportiva. I'm using La Sportiva right now. And for winter situations, you need boots that can handle the cold when you are sitting down. I don't think La Sportiva or Scarpa produces a type of boot that can handle the cold when you're staying. Uh, so uh, you, you, you see my, I have the, these one from uh, North Face. They're pretty bulky, but they are warmer when I'm staying put. For three seasons, you can go with whatever boot you want. The main condition is to be uh, waterproof and breathable. Now, in terms of uh, other hiking gear that you're going to need, of course, you'll need warm clothes for um, all seasons because you're photographing during sunrise and sunset and in the mountains if you're going in the mountains to do landscape photography it's cold even in summer so always have with you a pair of gloves a hat um, some uh, some warm fleece uh, a wind uh, a, a cloth a, a jacket that it's windproof it's a soft shell that it's windproof also have uh, a jacket that it's waterproof for if in case you get rain so you need to always be prepared also I have a pair of pants that are waterproof so I try to stay as waterproof as possible the first layer of, uh, of clothes the, the body layer it's uh, uh, made from uh, merino wool I have a down jacket I don't recommend down jackets that are these jackets are really good they keep you warm, but they are really, really tough to maintain and really, really sensitive. So I would recommend something with Prima Loft or some other type of material that will um, isolate you from the cold. So there you have it. You have all the gear that you need in one take. And uh, I hope you found all this information useful. If you have something to add to this gear, use the comment section below. If you want to support me or this channel, again, there's a link to my uh, final landscape photography album with my foggy forest. It's sold on Amazon and printed by Blurb. Go ahead, check it out. The link is again in the description. Thanks for watching. And until next time, keep on photographing because it's the only way to get better. Bye-bye.